Yo, this is Dead. Uh, this is a shortened edit of my full uh, Tesla bot breakdown. This just goes a little bit more directly to the meat. And so, you know, go watch the other one too. I think you'll like it. But here's this edit. All right, hope you like it. That's really back to my kind of coffee shop example. If you combine a certain amount of like parts together in combination with people, like so three coffee machines, two people, a building, a counter, whatever whatever all the pieces is, if you combine all those together, maybe you can make a thousand cups of coffee every day. Like So given a certain amount of uh, components and the same amount of inputs, you should be able to make the exact same amount of output. If you have 30 different toasters and you give each one the necessary amount of energy, each one should be able to make like the same amount of toast, assuming they're like the same like quality of toaster, they do the same thing. Every machine, if you like, kind of give it all the same amount of parts, and you should be able to make the exact same amount of output from them. So, so in this case, we have at each kind of company, you have two employees and one machine, and those amount of parts are uh, capable of producing, say, 10 products. Since each of these machines, aka company, um, has all the exact same amount of parts and like are comp comprised of the exact same amount of thing, they should be able to do the, the uh, create the same amount of output. Obviously, in a company, uh, some employees are a higher level laborer than others. Like some might be kind of slacking off. One person might be a tryhard. One person might be way smarter. Like obviously, Tesla, like Elon Musk, is kind of like an outstanding employee to have uh, for whatever he's able to produce. Than like um, I don't know, just like a random worker at some random company or something like that. So there's different like quality levels of labor. But this, so this is assuming like the labor quality stays constant. Everyone is capable of doing the same amount of stuff. Obviously, if you have like some greater person, then it's not the exact same machine because just like a computer, two different computers might have a GPU. One might be like a $3,000 GPU and the other is like a $500 one. Those two machines are capable of different tasks. So a machine should only be able to produce the same mouse stuff, assuming all the parts are the same. But assuming everything is identical to a machine, all the same like output should uh, also be possible. So you take two people, you combine them with a sewing machine and you can make 10 things. Uh, and uh, someone kind of realizes that and be like, hey, I want 10 things and they also make a company so they put together the same amount of parts and uh, take two people, combine them with a machine, do the same kind of labor in between, which is conversion of energy and lo and behold, they also make 10 products and then this company does the same thing. They, do, they also result in 10 outputs or products. And now if this is like, a, like I said, economies are embedded within each other and you can view them at different scales. So if you take this three co company unit as its own economy, now the wealth of this economy is 30 products. Now <clears throat> this company can trade what they make with this company if they'd like. I mean, if they're all making the same things, then not really a need to do that, but that is essentially what they have to offer to each other is the things that they make. Now, so to the extent that human beings and that labor are parts to the production that we create, which I don't know, last time I checked, I'm pretty sure every company has human beings in them. I mean, like, it seems like Tesla bot is more geared to being kind of like physical labor. So that that is then a smaller selection pool of all labor. Cause like some people are accountants and it's more about like what their mind can do or like maybe some engineer is good at designing something and so there's some forms of labor that doesn't seem like the tesla bot will touch and maybe some other forms of ai end up taking that role i mean in my mind it seems like any form of human labor should be automated or replaced by an ai i mean once you have a general intelligent ai it should be able to do all things humans can do or better and so all human tasks i would imagine should be replaceable but to the extent Tesla bot is doing the replacing, it seems to just be physical labor. So that would be a smaller su subset of all the jobs. But think about every like cashier, every co coffee barista. I mean, like a significant amount of jobs in this world is all about uh, converting like food energy into kinetic energy to perform some physical task in space, basically. And then so to the extent that what is required to make these 10 products is two forms of physical labor, human quality, plus a machine. Well, now if you take one of these Tesla bots, 
and replace the person, you now have all the exact same products, but yet one person didn't have to do anything. So human labor is decreased. The total amount of labor produced or like used is the same, perhaps maybe slightly less. If like the test ball is like an AI that can get higher, a higher degree of like optimization than like a human brain can get. So maybe, so maybe some less amount of labor occurred and you just got some uh higher like labor usefulness and efficiency gain but the exact the wealth of this economy is still the exact same it's still 30 products now so you make another tesla bot now you still have uh produced all the exact same uh, stuff still the same 30 but two people didn't have to do anything so you still have the exact same wealth of the of this economy uh, but yet two people just got to take it easy. Maybe they can interchange with these people and everyone just has like a more leisurely kind of just quality of life with the exact same ec economic size. But since these two people are now freed, they don't have to do anything. Their days are free. Maybe they start up another product company and now they're making another 10. Now this ec economic size is 40, all the like same amount of people, but the only kind of additional cost is whatever energy these Tesla bots took. So it's basically being able to just manufacture e economy at the extent where you can just start mass producing these things. And if they become even cheaper than a human being, I mean, they won't need bathroom breaks, they don't have to go to sleep. I guess they need to be recharged, but I guess you can have some redundancy in the amount of bots so that like when one has to go get recharged, the other one's charged up and ready to go. And just there's like less of a lag of like shifts having to do the same thing. You know, like a human needs to ramp up in their productivity. They're a little bit maybe tired or sluggish at first. And then after like an hour or so of working, maybe they're at their like peak performance. And then after lunch, they're tired again or like ready to go home and production won't be this constant thing. Maybe this is a graph of like human versus bot. And on this axis is like productivity, productivity and time. A human may like start kind of low, get better, and then they peak out, they go to lunch, and then lunch they start back down here because they kind of got tired after they ate, and then throughout the day they get ready, but then, oh, now it's only an hour until they go home, and now they're significantly more demotified and kind of just start looking at the internet or checking their phone more, like, uh, ordering food and looking at like the menus of places now the productivity is like down here like just basically the same as when they came in and so then your kind of like productivity yield that you got from like a certain amount of labor assuming like a tesla bot and a human cost the exact same per unit of time like tesla bot is going to be um way more valuable because like if the area under the curve is like this for human um Let's make a bot red. Maybe when it like first comes onto the assembly line, like it has to like get into the right spot. So it might be not like immediate production, but that's just like just programmed in the computer and just like um, code running what it'll do. Uh, it'll like pretty quickly get to like its peak performance and just stay there. Maybe it starts running like out of energy or something towards the end or something like that. And then may like, dip or like who knows it might like be little weird things and it won't be exact flat line but it'll be like this pretty con constant staying thing the whole shift and then now look at this difference in productivity that we got from the tesla bot i mean obviously i'm just drawing this so i could have made it whatever i wanted but i think the concept is pretty intuitive and i don't think a lot of people are going to agree that a robot is going to be less like slack offish than a human cost benefits i mean part of the cost of like paying a, a human is just the um like benefit packages healthcare, like insurance for like workman com worksman's comp type stuff people get hurt people get sick sometimes they're just demotivated there's morale problems you have to like pump extra energy into the system and just kind of appeasing people you have to have some space allocated to bathrooms like that's kind of that could be space used for more coffee machines or whatever once you just kind of start replacing humans all the exact same assuming all the same production can still occur you've just gained efficiency and to the point where you just start mass producing the tesla bots and each one then becomes marginally less expensive than the previous one just 
with economies of scale, the higher uh, scale you make something, the cheaper each like marginal unit is. Well, if anything could ever be mass produced, I would imagine it's human labor. Like the scale, the, there'll never be a time where you've run out of people that want to order another one, assuming you can uh, create some new form of production from it in which people want and they will trade what they make for it. So almost the limits are to the point where there's no more things in which to apply physical labor to, which I would imagine that we haven't even exhausted all the total amount of things to apply labor to. I mean, we're still on the same planet. What happens when we start going to Mars and uh, into the solar system and asteroid belt and like there's more physical tasks to be done in this universe. So like to the point where I think we're like close to finishing all physical tasks that we, humans want done, then yeah, maybe Tesla bot kind of runs out of growth opportunities, but I think we're pretty far from that. Or the other constraint would just be literally things that we can even think of making, but uh, I don't know, humans are pretty creative. And once we have this new tool of just basically on-demand labor, I'm sure we'll think of some pretty uh, crazy, awesome stuff to apply it to. So yeah, this kind of illustrates like why it's such a massive deal. It's basically being able to print economy. And remember the, the wealth of an economy is the total amount of stuff that you can make. So how much more stuff can we make when we can just print as many like human labor nodes as we want that will probably end up working better than a human. Like uh, if I just move each of these bots down to replace these people, then okay, we can make, then we can utilize this machine and make whole another 10. Now we're at 50 and we still have two left over. And so that then we can make another 10 and we're at 60. And then look at that, we've doubled the amount of economic output of this economy. And we still have the exact same amount of people and let's make another 30 Tesla bots. And then now we can uh, make another 15 times 10, 100, another 150. And now we're at what? 200 products to the extent that we can uh, make a Tesla bot. We essentially increase economic wealth of everyone within the economy. And I would imagine every economy will demand this and so the wealth of every human should start uh, increasing to the extent they are able to acquire Tesla bots. And then let's just replace all these people with uh, Tesla bots. Now this whole, all this whole 50 is only Tesla bots. Now these six different people, they might have an idea for a new company and they may recombine and reorganize and make a new thing. And then, so we then have all these 60 or this 50 uh, products plus whatever this new company that these people will turn into what does that make and now the economy will be this 50 plus what maybe these people each combine and now they're making uh, 70 products of something i don't know widgets so now the wealth of this economy is the 50 products plus the 70 wi widgets and now everyone has more because of basically on-demand manufactured labor so yeah, essentially behind every product and good or service that an economy has, which is the thing in which bestows wealth upon the economy, the actual raw things that people want is labor behind it at this at some point. And once you can start automating that labor, you then pretty much infinitely can increase the amount of stuff that economy has basically at the rate that you can make Tesla bots. So, but assuming it's like one-to-one -one of like production of humans Tesla bot, how much stuff do we make right now? Like our global economy is, I don't know what it is, like US economy is in like the 20, the tri 25 trillion or something, something like that. Like global economy, I don't know, let's just say it's like, I don't know, 50 trillion. I don't know what the actual number is, but that's kind of a proxy for how much stuff humans are making every year. Uh, I mean, it's like the dollar value with the stuff traded for throughout the year. And it's like, maybe there's high inflation from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And so this may not be like actually accurate indicator to track from like year to year of like knowing the difference of stuff that we made. But in essence, in essence, it's like a proxy to measuring that thing. All the am current amount of like humans in our workforce is currently able of producing like say $50 trillion worth of stuff. Well now if we replace every human within that loop or within that system, now you have doubled the amount of labor and you now you've just doubled the amount of stuff that we can make or maybe it scales differently because now that 
humans aren't bogged down by like kind of like the dangerous, repetitive, or boring tasks. They can now be kind of more intellectual and maybe think of some more higher order products that actually bring more valuable to the value to the company, like things humans want more than just like some better insurance or something like that, some things that we place higher economic value to. Yeah, this is kind of my attempt at illustrating why it's a big deal and why being able to print endless amount of labor is basically essentially the same as just being able to print economic size. And this should just be a product that almost (laughs) any corporation can utilize, assuming they have physical labor as a task that um, their company partakes in. So then what's the value of Tesla to the point that this like manifests and actually becomes a real product? If a chocolate company can always increase the amount of chocolate that they make by ordering another Tesla bot, they should always have demand to order another Tesla bot, assuming that that profit that they can make from like the next amount of t- uh, chocolate bars they can make is greater than what the tesla bot costs them and that price will depend on how long they've had the tesla bot like there'll be like a time frame in which it like surpasses a human until humans reach the effectual demand of chocolate bars there should always be a need of making a slightly more amount of chocolate bars and at the point where we even do reach that effectual demand where like one more unit produced doesn't change the amount that we like consume and we've just eaten as many chocolate bars as we possibly want like just just stop making them because we already have as many as we'll ever eat i mean then the chocolate company can then start making the ice cream bars or something like that like there's always another next thing to make that humans want and until we hit that next where there isn't that next thing that humans want made then there should always be another marginal demand for purchasing a tesla bot and so this will just basically be a product in which it's just infinitely sold i uh, it's kind of like mind-blowing what this could be Yo, thanks for watching the shortened edit of my Tesla bot breakdown. Go watch the full length edit. And uh, yeah, it just kind of wraps everything up a little bit better, adds a little bit more context. And yeah, I think you'll like it. Uh, subscribe and like and comment. And yeah, watch whatever, whatever other videos I make. Thanks. Bye.